we can control this uh, bank selection by this PSW uh, register. So, we will see this processor status word register later, but uh, what happens is that you can we, we have got uh, individual bit set reset type of instructions in 8051 and this bank selection. Uh, so, this uh, these two bits uh, uh, 3 and 2, 3 and 2, so they being 0, 0, it will select this bank 0, these two bits being 0, 1 will select bank 1, so 1, 0 will select bank 2 and 1, 1 will may select bank 3. So, you can simply have the instruction like set B PSW point 2, so that will be setting the bit uh, of PSW 2 and then if you, you use uh, say, say clear bit PSW dot 3. So, what I am doing? I am setting this bit as 0 and this bit as 1. So, effectively I am selecting this bank 1. So, this way we can use this uh, PSW uh, bit settings for, uh, uh, for uh, selecting or switching between the banks. Okay. So, next we will look into this uh, bit addressable memory locations. So, there are 128 bits uh, location which can be accessed individually. Okay. So, their uh, physical memory address is 2022F. I am sorry, there is a uh, shifting here, this 20 is actually here. So, there is a misalignment of this numbering. So, this 20 is here, so, then 20 location 20's bit number 0. So, that is given the location address 00. So, this bit number is, so if you say, uh, say uh, if you if you are writing like set bit, sorry, if you are writing like uh, set bit um, 0, so if you if you write something like uh, set b 0, so what it will do? So, this particular bit will be set to 1. Similarly, if you set, say like set b uh, say um, 5, so, this particular bit will be set to 1. So, this way we can access individual bits in 8051 instruction. So, we will see them in detail later. So, uh, like say, uh, uh, say move, C, move C comma 1 A hex. So, what it will do? This C stands for the carry flag. So, this is the carry flag. So, this is the carry flag and you see this is if you count from the here. So, 0 0 onwards like this. So, this location becomes this location address is 1 a, this particular bit address is 1 a. So, this carry will get the value of this particular bit. So, if this bit is say 0, then carry will get a 0, if this bit is 1, then the carry will get a 1 or you can. So, you can write the same thing in this fashion also. So, 23 hex dot 2. So, this is the location 23, as I said there is a misalignment of lines numbers. So, this is the location, uh, this is the uh, memory location 23 and then 23 is bit number 2. So, this is bit number 0, 1, 2. So, bit number 2 we want to access. So, that is also the other way by which we can uh, do this, uh, we can uh, access this individual bit. So, this way this we have got uh, bit addresses running from 00, 0 to 7f. Okay, total 128 uh, locations we can use for in the in the bit addressable in this bit addressable fashion. So uh, they are very very much useful. Like uh, many of the um, interfaces that we have in uh, embedded applications, so they have got a digital input output, and these digital input outputs are being say a single bit input. So they can be very easily uh, put into uh, associated with these locations. Then we will look into the special function registers. So, there are many special functions registers ranging uh, whose address is 80 to FF hex. Okay. So, they are used for direct addressing and uh, so we have got data registers and control registers. So, we will see what are they. So, they have got uh, in different context they have been used. As I said that 8051, so it has got uh, uh, within it timers already built in timer counters then serial ports are there, then interrupt mechanism is there, then some of the advanced version of 8051 they have got AD converters, DA converters also integrated. 
So, controlling those uh, peripherals, so we need to have some additional uh, registers okay, for setting uh, for controlling them and checking the status of them. So, we need some additional registers. So, they are the control registers. So, this special function registers, so we will be using, we will see that there are a number of control registers. So, throughout our lecture, we will find that many such control registers will be mentioned. Okay. And this uh, 3027 f, so this is basically the RAM space. Okay, so, you can use some, te you, you can store some temporary data there, you can use them for stack, okay. so all this can be done. Okay. So, what is happening? So, bit address, so uh, overall summary of this uh, 8051 on chip memory. So, you see that if you start with 00, first we have got the register banks 00 to 1 f. So, the first we have the regi default register bank R0 to R7, then bank 1, bank 2, bank 3. Then 2 to 2 f, we have got this bit addressable locations. Okay. So, stand bit number 00 to 7 f. After that, from 30 to 7 f, we have got uh, this general purpose RAM. Okay. So, this is the general purpose, uh, so this is the scratch pad sort of thing. They are, they can be, they are, they are not bit addressable, they are byte addressable only, but we can use them for uh, storing some 8 bit values there. Now, if you look 880 onwards, okay, so if you look into 80 onwards, then what happens is you have got this, uh, these are the special function registers. So, some of the special function registers are like every port. So, you remember that there are 4 ports in 8051, P0, P1, P2, P3. So, P0 is associated with uh, address 80, then P1 is associated with the address 90, P2 associated with A0 and uh, P3 associated with B0. So, we have got these uh, ports also, uh, uh, they, are, they are also associated with memory location. So, in your instruction, so you can either say port 0 or you can say memory location 80, they are all the same. Similarly, you can say P1 or memory location 90, they are all the same. Now, this uh, stack pointer, so this 81, so lo location 81, so that is that corresponds to the stack pointer register. Then 82, uh, so is the DPL and 83 is the DPH. So, this DPH, DPL pair, so this makes the DPTR register for external memory access and they are not bit addressable. So, you see that these locations, so they are not bit addressable. Then this location is uh, not documented what it is doing. Now, 87 is the PCON register. So, this is for power control. So, you can put that 8051 in the power down mode by setting this PCON bits accordingly. So, you can use this PCON register there. Then this uh, TCON uh, is another uh, register which is used for timer control, timer uh, and timer and interrupt control. Then T mod is for the timer mode control. So, it, so these are all different register. Then this TL0, TL1, TH0, TH1. So, these they are for timers. Okay. So, this TL0 and TL1, they hold the timer value uh, of for timer 0 and TH0 and TH1, they hold the current time value in timer 1. Then this SCON register is for serial communication control. So, this bit, uh, uh, so the, the what, the, what does this bit mean? So, we will see that later when you go to this individual portion. Then SBUF is also for uh, serial communication. And what happens is that if you want to transmit something serially, you have to copy it into SBUF. Okay. After setting this SCON properly, so if you copy it into SBUF, then the character will be sent serially through the uh, transmit bit and TXD and RXD lines. Then this is P2, this is interrupt enable uh, register. So, this interrupt enable register, so this is for enabling interrupt. So, we will see that later again. Then IP is the interrupt priority. So, you can modify the priorities of different interrupts. In 8051, there are a number of interrupts like this, uh, the two timers, so they have, they can give interrupt. Then the serial transmission, so that can generate another, another interrupt. Then we have got this uh, INT0 and INT1 pins, uh, so they can also generate interrupts. So, that way we have got a number of sources of interrupts and uh, these interrupt priorities can be modified. There is a default priority but beyond that you can also modify the priority. Then this PSW is the processor status word. So, this D0 to D7 they have got some special meaning when we go to PSW register we will see. Then this accumulator ACC, so this has got E0 to E7, so these are the addresses. So, you can 
um, you can uh, write this uh, you, you can get this uh, uh, value uh, in the accumulator as an 8 bit pattern or you can access as individual bits. So, you see that bit number so P 0 is at location 880. So, the bit numbers it represents is 80, 81, 82, 83, 84 like that up to 87. After that TCON is bit addressable and it starts at location 8, so it is at location 88 8 and the bit numbers also start with 88. 8. So, in this way at uh, whenever uh, we have got uh, whenever we are uh, at a boundary of 8, okay. so that at uh, that point we have got this bit addressable feature like we have got this bit addressability at location 80 then we have got bit addressability at 88, 8, then at 90, then 98, then uh, A0, A8, B0, B8. Okay. So, then uh, uh, C0 is of course not there, then we have got this uh, D0. So, after B8 you see that uh, there is uh, nothing as after, after so B8 to uh, BF if we say then there is nothing like C0. Okay. So, start with D0, D0 to D7 and then E0 e 0 to e 7. So, bit numbers are the same. Okay. So, these are the byte address and these are the bit numbers, they are the bit addresses. So, so this special function memory, so you can uh, we can just uh, review it once more. So, this uh, 8 0 is for uh, p 0, then this uh, 9 0 is for p 1, then this uh, B0 is for P3 and so uh, then P A0 is for P2 like that. Then this um, uh, SP is at uh, 81, DPL is at 82. So, the same diagram that we had previously, so that is shown in another fashion here. So, this uh, register banks, so as we said that the active bank is selected by PSW's uh, RS1 and RS0 bits. So, this uh, the register bank select 1 and register bank select 0 bits. So, this will permit context switching in interrupt service routine. So, as I was telling that you can uh, switch the context very fast. So, without storing all the uh, registers that the ISR is going to use, you can just uh, switch over to the uh, switch over the bank. And if you follow a, a policy that all the uh, main all the interrupt service routines uh, or uh, will be using the register bank say 2 and the main routine will be using register bank 0. So, that way there is no confusion in the uh, say saving of register. So, that is not required at all. So, you can just switch the register bank. So, if you set this RS1 and RS0, so this is the bit RS0 and this is the bit RS1. Okay. So, uh, 0, 1, 2, so this is the PSW register. So, uh, this, uh, so this is bit 0, 1, 2, 3, so and 3 and 4, so PSW 3 and PSW 4. So, previously we said that it is uh, 2 and 3, but it is actually 3 and 4. Okay. Uh, so, PSW 3 is the RS0 bit and PSW 4 is the RS1 bit. So, this is uh, this uh, this is if these two bits are 0, 0, then it will be accessing, it will be setting register bank 0 as the current uh, registers to current set of registers to be used. Similarly, if these two bits are 0, 1, then it will be using this uh, bank 0, 1 and the corresponding addresses will be 0, 0 to 0, 7. So, if you are writing an instruction like say move if you are writing an instruction like say move uh, a comma uh, something like if you are writing like say move a comma r3 then depending upon uh, the current register bank selection so it will be accessing one of the locations like if the current bank is say register bank 0 then when you say r3 so this is uh, actually uh, will be accessing the uh, register so this uh, this this so this registers uh, as we uh, we know that this will be uh, starting with uh, uh, this registers will be starting with r1 i think uh, yeah so register starts with number r0 so if you say r3 then the corresponding number that we have is uh, so r3 so the 0 1 2 3 so this is the location memory location 
memory location 0 3. So, that will be uh, used here. So, this instruction, so this will uh, get the uh, into the accumulator content of memory location 3. Okay. On the other hand, if you are uh, if provided you are using the register bank uh, 0, if you are using register bank 4 instead, then the same instruction. So, this will be taking uh, the accumulator will get the content of memory location uh, that is uh, uh, that is 1 0 1 1 1 2 1 3. It will get the content of memory location 1 3. So, this way you can see that uh, depending upon this register bank selection. So, we can uh, do it like this. So, you can also uh, write it as instead of writing like a comma r 3 you can write like move a comma 3. So, when you say a comma 3 then the register bank is uh, uh, not in question. Okay. So, the, in this case it will execute this one only. So, the move instruction when you are writing the move instruction you can write either in this form move a comma r 3 in that case depending upon the register bank selection. So, it will either be accessing say uh, location memory 3 or the location 13 in our example. However, if you are using the instruction like move a comma 3, move a comma 3, then whatever be your bank selection, so it will move the content of uh, memory location 3 to a. So, it is uh, the register bank independent. So, that way we can uh, have this uh, register banks uh, useful. Apart from that, we have got this uh, p as the parity bit. So, that is set or cleared by hardware. Uh, each instruction cycle to indicate odd even number of ones in the accumulator. So, that, that can be useful for um, uh, parity check. Then uh, this is, um, uh, this, is uh, the, this flag the user can uh, put some values there. So, this is also bit addressable, but it is not used. Okay. So, you can use it for your own purpose. Okay. So, you can use it as a, as a one bit uh, location. Then this OV is the overflow flag then this R s 0 and 1. So, they are for the register bank selection F 0. So, this is uh, available for the user for, for general purpose. So, this is also uh, a, so you can use it for your own purpose. So, though the name is F 0, but it is available. Then this A c is the auxiliary carry the, the, uh, if, if from the um, when you are doing say addition operation or the subtraction operation. So, from bit number 3 if a carry is generated towards bit number 4 then this auxiliary carry will be set and the carry flag is Cy. Okay. So, that is uh, so if the overall 8 bit addition or subtraction type of operation generates a carry then this carry flag will be set. So, this is the PSW register. Now, other uh, registers that we have in 8051 A or accumulator. So, this is the most important uh, uh, register that we have and all these arithmetic logic operations. So, they will be using a register as one of the source and as well as the destination. So, you can say that um, so, you can have an instruction like say add a comma b. So, in that case the content of A and B registers will be added and the value will be stored in A register. So, there is no instruction like say add B comma A. So, this is not there. Okay. So, all instructions so they will have A as the as the first operand. Now, apparently it seems that uh, why do we mention this A separately. So, in the, uh, so this add A is actually the uh, full mnemonic you can say. So, most of the instruction you will find that though we are mentioning A separately, but that is only for human understanding. As far as the machine is concerned, so there is nothing, so you cannot have after add, you cannot have any other register name, it has to be A. Okay. So, this way this accumulator is one of the very important uh, registers uh, that we have. Then uh, we have got uh, this uh, B register. So, this is another uh, very important register that is there. Then the PSW is program status word, SP is the stack pointer, this is the stack pointer. Then we have got uh, this program counter like uh, say, um, so program counter is uh, there. So, this is the program counter register accordingly and there is a DPTR or data pointer. So, data pointer is uh, this one, so DPTR. So, for program memory access, so it will go via this program counter. 
and for data memory access it will go by this data pointer ok. For, for the external memory access so it will use the DPTI register. For internal memory access it will use program counter or some addresses but for external memory access uh, the external uh, data memory access so it will use the DPTI register. So, apart from that we have got this special function registers memory inter so memory interface so this address generator address uh, data then control. So, they are there. So, they but these lines are going but they are actually all internal to the chip because this side I will be connecting uh, some memory chip uh, some memory and that memory will have will uh, is also internal ok. So, that is not shown here uh, explicitly, but it is just here anyway. So, next uh, So, the to summarize the registers that we have is are like this we have got this A B registers plus the registers R 0 through R 7 then so they are all 8 bit registers and the important 16 bit registers are like DPTR and PC. So, DPTR has can be considered as two 8 bit registers DPH and DPL and this uh, PC is a 16 bit register. So, going towards uh, this uh, instructions of 8051 the assembly language instructions of 8051. So, you can uh, we can we can visualize them in from different angles like the data transfer instructions then the addressing modes in which this uh, data are accessed then the uh, data processing instructions like arithmetic and logic operation and there can be some program flow instruction that will control like jump call this type of instruction which will control the operation of uh, individual uh, operation of the flow of the program. So, the first category is the data transfer instruction. So, one instruction may be like move destination comma source. So, destination gets the value of source. Then we have got stack instructions like push byte and pop byte. So, implement the stack pointer move byte on the stack and pop byte it will move the uh, move uh, from stack to byte and then it will increment the stack pointer. So, uh, it is like this I think uh, there are some. So, this move destination comma source like you can have instructions like say move as I said uh, I can have an instruction like move a comma r 1. So, r 1's value is moved to a then we can have like move a comma 3. So, memory location 3's content will be coming to A. So, they are so this move instruction. So, this is always with with the internal memory. So, it does not access the external memory. So, they are all with internal memory. Then the stack instructions. So, stack instructions are like this. So, you can have instruction like push 5. So, what it what it will do? The content of uh, memory location 5 will be pushed onto the stack. So, this will go to stack and this as we know that memory location 5 actually uh, it corresponds to the register R 5 in the uh, so, so, if you are uh, so uh, it, it will be in the register bank 0. So, this is the uh, register R 5. So, it will be uh, saving the content of register 5 onto the stack provided you are using register bank 0. So, if you are using some other register bank then accordingly this number has to be modified but we cannot write like push R 5. So, that is not possible. So, this is not possible. So, we have to tell the byte, uh, byte address directly and that way it has to be done. Then there is an exchange instruction. So, that can be used for exchanging the uh, accumulator with some byte. So, x c h a byte. So, it will exchange the accumulator and byte and x c h d. So, it will exchange the nibbles of the accumulator and byte. So, we will see some example. Like say move a comma hash 0. So, that this so whenever we put a hash. So, most of the assemblers will take it as immediate value. So, if you do not put this hash then the meaning is you get the memory location 0 content will come to the a register. But when you put this hash. So, we mean that it is the uh, memory it, it is the immediate value 0 that will come to a register. Then move r 4 comma hash 11 hex. So, this 11 hex will be put into the r 4 register move b comma hash 11. 
so you uh, decimal 11 will be put in the b register so again this is a convention followed by uh, most of the assemblers that if you uh, if you follow the number by h so it will be taken as hexadecimal number if you do not write anything or if you write a d uh, after the number so it will be taken as the decimal so you can also initialize the dptr so you can say like move dptr hash 7521 hex so the 75 will go to the dph register and 21 will go to the dpl register as a result this dptr will have the value 7521 so this is the thing a gets 0 so here r4 gets uh, the pattern um, 11 hex and in this case uh, it gets the number 11 uh, decimal and in this case dptr gets the 7521 hex okay so we can uh, We can also uh, put it in this format like say move, uh, move dptr comma um, hash my data where my data is, so this is defined as uh, uh, db. So this is defined as db. So this is, uh, so, so this is again uh, used in uh, some, uh, many of the assemblers as the uh, as some space at which you can uh, we are uh, we are defining some constant data. So, it is like this. So, this ORG statement, so ORG statements means that the assembler will start assembling the program uh, from that address onwards. So, this is just uh, this is just telling the assembler that the next uh, program, the next uh, instruction or data whatever it is, so it will be put at this particular address onwards. So, if this is the memory, so you can say that at uh, memory location 200 onwards, it will be uh, it, if this is the location 200, so from this position onwards, so it will be uh, putting the value India. So, so I will be put here. Then if this is 201, so N will be going there. Then this is 202, D will be going there. So this way the numbers will be stored. The individual characters will be over. so DB stands for defined byte. So this my data DB India. So this will be. Uh, uh, defining this 5 byte space and in that 5 byte space it will be writing the value 200. So, when you say that uh, dptr uh, move dptr hash my data, so this uh, my data uh, where whatever be the address so 200, so the 200 will come to my data. So, we can, so this uh, so, we can have this uh, dptr 7521 hex this movement. So, it can also be executed like move dpl 21 hex and move dph uh, has 75 hex there should be a hex here. So, that way we can do it and we can uh, also do it like this that uh, say this is another way of uh, doing this like say this uh, this, is, this is another way of the move, ex move instruction like count eq. 30. So, EQ is another assembler directive. So, where I am defining a constant count whose uh, value is equal to 30 and move R4 comma hash count. So, this will uh, this is same as the instruction sorry uh, this is same as the instruction uh, move R4 comma hash 30 okay. the same as this. So, this EQ is another assembler directive that tells the assembler that in the remaining program instead of writing constants that way. So, I may write I, I may use this uh, symbol this uh, name count and while assembling the program or generating the machine code for the program. So, wherever it finds the word count it will replace by the value uh, 30 there. So, this way we can so this is another way of doing the movement this is uh, one way and also this is another uh, way at which this dptr can be initialized. So, we can have some the if dptr has to point to say uh, this address for external memory sorry not this one say 200. So, it has to point to this uh, address. So, it can be done in this fashion. So, we define uh, first uh, this uh, number uh, this uh, um, uh, constant India and give it the name my data. So, later on when this when I am writing hash my data. So, this is basically uh, the value of my data and value of my data is nothing but the address from where the my data starts okay, 
So, that way this dptr will get the value 200 in that case. 